भगवते वासुदेवाय डोबरे दोषले I was asked to give a class about racism, a current topic in the news nowadays. If you're unfortunate enough to read the news, <laughs> actually, we have the news here. It's called the Bhagavad Gita. This is actually the news. Everything else is fake news. <laughs> so we'll read the real news here. So this is Bhagavad Gita. Chapter five, Karma Yoga, Action in Krishna Consciousness, text number eighteen. Vidya Vinaya Sampani Brahmani Gavi Hastini Shuni Chaiva Swapake Cha Pandita Samadarshana. The humble sages, by virtue of true knowledge, see with an equal vision a learned and gentle Brahman, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater. Purport: A Christian conscious person does not make any distinction between species or castes. The Brahmin and the outcast may be different from the social point of view, or a dog, a cow, an elephant may be different from the point of view of species. But these differences of body are meaningless from the viewpoint of a learned transcendentalist. This is due to their relationship with the, to the Supreme. For the Supreme Lord, by His plenary portion, His Paramatma, is present in everyone's heart. Such a misunderstanding of the Supreme is real knowledge. As far as the bodies are concerned, in different castes or different species of life, the Lord is equally kind to everyone, because He treats every living being as a friend. He maintains Himself as Paramatma, regardless of the circumstances. Other living entities, the Lord as Paramatma is present both in the outcast and in the Brahmana, although the body of a Brahmana and that of an outcast are not the same. The body is the material productions of different modes of material nature. The soul and the super soul in the body are of the same spiritual quality. The similarity in the quality of the soul and the super soul, however, does not make them equal in quantity. The individual soul is present only in that particular body, whereas the Paramatma is present in each and every body. Krishna conscious person has full knowledge of this, and therefore he is truly learned and has equal vision. The similar characteristics of the soul and super soul are that they are both conscious, eternal, and blissful. But the difference is that the individual soul is conscious within the limited jurisdiction of the body. Whereas the super soul is conscious of all bodies, the super soul is present in all bodies without distinction. Vidya Vinaya Sampani Brahmani Gavi Hastini Shuni Chaiva Swapake Cha Pandita Samadarshana. A learned and gentle Brahman sees with an equal vision. The learned and gentle sage sees with an equal vision. The learned and gentle Brahman. The cow, the elephant, the dog, and the dog eater. Om Vishnu Brahma Krishna Prasthai Buddha Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tanamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Vajarane Nirvishesha Shindivari Paschatyade Sitarne. They're talking about racism nowadays, but actually everyone in the material world, except for a devotee, a pure devotee. Is a racist. That comes along with material conditioning. Only when one becomes a pure devotee, then one ceases to be a racist, or a sexist, or whatever else we may say, is part of our conditioning in the material world: casteism, speciesism, whatever. Unless we can see the super soul in the soul, then one is. Covered by ignorance, as it says here, vidya vinaya sampane, that one who is actually learned and gentle, well, one who is actually pandit, then they can actually see samadarshana. 
But to become learned, then it requires some qualification. In the previous verse, Krishna said, Buddhya Vishuddhya Yukto Jitamashi. Tad Buddhyas, Tad Atmanas, Tad Nishtas, Tad Parayanaha, Gajatnya Puna Avritim, Jnana Nirduta Kamashaha. Owen's faith, mind, refuge, intelligence are all fixed in the Supreme. Then one becomes cleansed of all misgivings through complete knowledge and thus proceeds straight on the path to self realization. In other words, Unless one comes to the platform of Krishna consciousness by complete engagement in Krishna's service with one's body, mind, and words, then one will not have love for every living entities. It's not a question of being neutral but all living entities, nor is it a question of not hating all living entities. Actually, one becomes free from all prejudice and all misgivings, as it says in that verse, when one actually comes to the stage of Krishna consciousness, love of Krishna. Other than that, everyone is in ignorance. Utkraman tam sitin vapi, punjana vagunan vita, vimuronan pashanti, pashanti jnana chakshusha. The foolish, which means 99.99% of everyone, they cannot understand how the living entity quits his body or what kind of body he enjoys under the spell of the modes of nature. Only ones whose eyes are trained with knowledge can see all this clearly. Itanto yoginastrayanam pashantyatma nivastita itanto yakritatmano naiva pashantyacheta saha. The endeavoring transcendentalist who is situated in self realization can see all this clearly. But those, those whose eyes are not trained, although they may try in so many different ways, cannot actually see what's taking place. In other words, there's a big drama going on in the material world. And Shakespeare said it's much ado about nothing. All about so-called equality, uh, equality in material existence nowadays, that give and take, that they want give and take, that you give to me and I take from you. That's called give and take. Everyone wants to exploit others, and everyone's disappointed that they're being exploited, because that's Kali Yuga. And people want to point out how they're being exploited, not to the point that they want to become equal to everyone, they want to get the chance to exploit others. Because in Kali Yuga, there is no Dharma. Dharma will put us at least on the path of purification, which, in which we can see everyone as a spiritual being, as a servant of Krishna, and therefore serve them in relation to Krishna. At least put one in the path. But there is no dharma. People are engaged in illicit sex, gambling, meat eating, intoxication, and therefore there's no mercy, there's no austerity, there's no truthfulness. People cannot be truthful. Their whole existence is a lie. The Bali concept of life is a lie. And yet people are talking about, you know, this or that prejudice. But everyone's prejudiced because they're living a lie. They're claiming that they're the center of existence, which is a lie. And they want everyone else to make them the center of the existence, which is another lie. Instead of actually telling the truth that Krishna is the center of existence and that we unfortunately have become crazy by trying to put ourselves in the center. And when we stop doing that, when we put Krishna in the center, then we can start becoming sane again. And anyone who doesn't put Krishna in the center must be considered to be insane to one degree or another. So if a hundred million people who are insane get together and they protest, it doesn't make them sane. If they got together and chanted Hare Krishna, they might become sane. Because in this age, the only way people are going to get out of the Bali concept of life and revive their spiritual concept so they can see themselves and everyone else in relation to Krishna is by chanting Hare Krishna. Everything else is more or less a waste of time. It won't solve anything. Even whether the uh, behind the scenes, the Illuminati or whatever, whoever else you may believe is controlling everything, 
is trying to take over the universe. Uh, actually, the modes of material nature have already taken over the universe. <laughs> and because the sin, people's sinful activities in Kali Yuga, they've been taken over by the modes of nature, mainly the darkest modes of nature. And they'll continue. Punak punas charvata charvana, chewing the chew. It doesn't matter what, what, whatever we read in the newspapers, whatever protest goes on, whatever this latest scandal or intrigue or conspiracy, it's just a waste of time. Because we're just seeing people living out their karma and creating even more horrible karma for the future. The only solution is that we have to become Krishna conscious. If we become Krishna conscious, one of us becomes Krishna conscious, at least one person in the universe won't be racist. <laughs> and we can actually see with an equal vision the learned and gentle Brahman, the cow, the dog, the dog eater. And then we, at least one person in the universe won't be racist. And then you can go back to Godhead. Otherwise, the rest of us have to fight with each other in this universe somewhere, somehow, sometime. So rather than spend our time worrying about this external activities that are going on, you know, who's right and who's wrong, we should reach the conclusion that everyone is wrong. There's nothing good and bad in the material world. It's all bad. In between the good and the bad, there's things that are worse. That's all. Probably gives the example of wet stool and dry stool. In India, pe people pass stool in the field. And there is a controversy going on. Sometimes even in India, there are controversies. <laughs> but this controversy is whether or not the side that, of the stool that's baking, being baked by the sun is actually better than the side of the stool that's still wet, or worse. So they'll argue about it. But after all, the basis of their, the, the subject of their argument is stool. <laughs> and therefore, whoever wins, they just win on a very, not a very uh, reminical platform, subject matter. If we want to make a difference in this world and actually help people, if we actually want equality and freedom and prosperity, whatever we may think is desire, then we have to chant Hare Krishna. We have to read these books because we can chant Hare Krishna and still be in the material concept of life. So we have to chant Hare Krishna in Krishna consciousness. And now in order to do that, we not only have to chant Hare Krishna, but we have to know what the philosophy is. So it helps to get a Bhagavad Gita and read the philosophy and then memorize the philosophy. It's not enough just to read it and then forget it. I read the Bhagavad Gita. Someone may say, I read the Bhagavad Gita three years ago. So I'm a devotee. Oh, really? What's in the Bhagavad Gita? I have no idea. <laughs> I just read it three years ago. And yesterday I touched it, so I'm, I'm, I made a little bit more advanced. It's, in my, it's on my coffee table. <laughs> so even my coffee becomes purified, <laughs> comes offered to Krishna, who's on the cover of with Arjuna. <laughs> that much I know about Bhagavad Gita. No, we have to read Bhagavad Gita, and then we actually have to remember what it says. Because if we don't remember what it says, it's good as not knowing anything. Actually, if we don't know what it says in the Bhagavad Gita, it would be good if we were in ignorance, but we're actually worse than in ignorance. We're something below ignorance. Because if we didn't know who we are, that's what we don't. One thing is the first thing of ignorance is that we think we're this body. So that's not very good to identify ourselves with these gross and subtle bodies. That's called ignorance. But even worse than being ignorance, not knowing who we are as a spiritual being, is that we think we're something that we're not, namely these bodies. So because we're in ignorance, we don't know who we are. That's called avidya. Then we are asmita. We have this false ego by which we think something that we're not. So we have to spend so much time in this lifetime trying to forget who we think we are. 
course, we don't have to do that. Actually, what we do is have to act according to who we actually are, and then we'll forget who we think we're not. Just like if you light a match in a dark room, then the darkness can't put the match out. So if we find out who we actually are, namely Krishna's servant, we've got the hint in Bhagavad Gita. It says, you're a Krishna's servant. And we may think, well, that sounds like a good idea. Well, this could, could be true, who knows? Anything's possible. So if we actually read Bhagavad Gita and understand what it says, that we're all Krishna's servants, and then Krishna tells us what he wants us to do. Patram, Pushpam, Palam, Toyam, Yome Bhakta Priyachati, Taraham Bhakti Uparitam, Ashnami Priyat He wants us to do something out of love for him. Now we take a sign or we take a bicycle and we ride around the parliament, whatever, and say you're all bad. And they're looking at us and saying, you're bad. <laughs> Everything's bad. Don't worry, it's going to get worse. <laughs> we could do that, but at least we should bring some prasadam and hand it out to everyone. <laughs> chant Hare Krishna together as we ride around, that, that may have some value. Scribits of Bhagavad Gita is, etc. Otherwise, as long as we're in the material concept of life, as long as we have no idea what the value of life is or what we're trying to achieve in life, as long as there is no dharma, there's no understanding of moksha, liberation, what the life has been for, getting out of the material concept of life, then we'll simply have a population of people hankering for ec so-called economic development, for sense gratification. I say so-called economic development because people don't even know what economic development is. The education is so poor in my society, people don't even know it's a value. They don't know that most people don't even know what, what food is. As I said in other lectures, when they try to experiment and find out what the nutritional value of breakfast cereal is, they fed a box of the breakfast cereals to rats. And the rats that they fed the, box, the breakfast cereal to, they ate the box and left the breakfast cereal because they didn't want to get sick by eating the cereal. So people don't even know what food is. They eat things that are unmentionable. And they breathe in contaminated air, just like they were talking about the coronavirus, how people had to stay inside and it was so dangerous to their health. But actually in parts of the world where there is intense pollution due to the factories, when they stayed inside, the air cleaned up, cleared up. Like the Ganges or the Jamuna finally settled down all the waste that they were putting into it. And you could actually see the Ganges rather than the waste and the, and the Jamuna. So the air quality became better. So clean air, fresh water, healthy food, nice relationships with people. People are very disturbed during this crisis because the relationships became worse. There, were more, there was more domestic violence because people stayed at home with each other. They found out who they were staying at home with. <laughs> they finally got a chance to talk to each other. <laughs> they found out that they made a mistake. <laughs> so in that sense, relationships, people have no training of how to establish a proper relationship. The only thing that they can relate to is usually their pet especially the, their fish, because they don't say anything. <laughs> they have imaginary conversations, and the fish always agrees with them. <laughs> and whenever the fish sees them, they seem to smile. <laughs> so people that don't have nice relationships, they don't have proper anything that you would want to get through economic development. One time Prabhupada was talking with Trivikra Maharaj, they were at Tittenhurst, John Lennon's estate, the Beatle. 
And at that, uh, at that time, Trayaka Maharaj was glorifying John Lennon that he has 300 million pounds. Pound is not, I mean, pounds. He was not that bad. <laughs> he had 300 million sterling pounds. <laughs> And isn't he, isn't that, you know, isn't that wonderful? And Prabhupada said, well, what's the value of 300 million pounds? He doesn't know how to spend it. He doesn't know how to utilize it. That even a devotee who has no money, hardly, they know how to eat better than a billionaire. They know how to sleep better. They have better relationships, hopefully. Unless the billionaire is a devotee, I don't know. There are some. They have some knowledge of how to actually live in the material world in a more positive way. How, what actually is necessary, what is, nece what is needed for actually peace and happiness. And to actually have the gra senses gratified. We can see that after the feast, when there's nice prashadam, the devotees definitely look like they're gratified. <laughs> And when one's actually satisfied, then one can actually think about the purpose of life, which is to get out of the bodily concept of life. But when people are always dissatisfied, they're always like that ass who has the carrot in front of himself and is pulling a very heavy burden on his back, trying to get and taking one step forward to get the carrot, and the carrot goes one step forward. So the material modern society is simply people with heavy burdens taking one step forward to get the carrot and always the carrot is one step ahead of them. iPhone 12, I think, no? 13, 29, 128. Maybe when they get up to 108, they'll be more suspicious. <laughs> always one step more towards perfection. But they've neglected the actual perfection, which is themselves. They've neglected their own selves because they're an illusion. They don't know who they are. They don't know what, how they've gotten this body. They don't know what the next body is. They don't know that everyone is actually a spiritual soul. And in any circumstance, they could actually do something valuable for their own lives and their lives of others by simply engaging in Krishna's service. So that's the message of the Hare Krishna movement to encourage people not to waste their lives, but to try to become, utilize whatever opportunities they have to become conscious of Krishna. The Hare Krishna movement doesn't deny that there is differences. In America nowadays, I guess maybe in Europe also, they've come to the point that they don't believe there's such a thing as men and women anymore. They can't even see the difference. <laughs> Now that's really blindness. They think now they have 20, uh, 90 something designations for gender. And in America, you, you can lose your job if you don't know those 92. If you make the mistake of calling someone a man or a woman, they might get offended and have you fired from your job. So they've come to the point they don't know the difference. Soon it won't be a difference between an animal. If you call someone, excuse me, sir or madam, whatever, and, and they go, woof, woof. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> so that point is coming. <laughs> that, that time is coming. So unless people become conscious of Krishna, then they are so much absorbed how, value, how important it is to get a certain kind of body and a certain kind of circumstance for my body and that everything has to be equal. Well, Krishna has news for the world, as it says in this purple one we read. No one is ever going to become, everyone's not ever going to, not everyone is going to, there's, no, there's never going to be a point in existence eternally where everyone is equal. Because Krishna will always be God. 
If you tell that to people nowadays, they'll go out and protest. <laughs> Why should Krishna be God? <laughs> he should step down. <laughs> Give someone else a chance. <laughs> this is unfair. It's inequality. Anyone who says Krishna is God, they'll be fired from their job because it depresses too many people to think that they can't become God like Krishna. <laughs> well, that's material existence. Everyone is depressed because they can't become God. They want to become God. Each chadvesha smutena dvanva mohena bharata. Everyone is anxious and anxiety to become God, to become the controller and enjoyer. Everyone's competing for that, and they're all depressed that they can't do it. Even if you become a multi-billionaire, still there'll be something that you want to control more. As Howard Hughes was asked, Howard Hughes was the richest person in the world at that time. A little less than Kubera, though. And he was asked, now that you have so many mil- billions of dollars, he had $16 billion at the time, which is like $160 billion now. Now they have all this money, what do you want? He said, I want more money. <laughs> he felt insecure. He only had $16 billion. He wasn't sure if he was going to get a piece of bread tomorrow. <laughs> Price of his stock went down, he'd be in danger. So everyone is insecure. Because that's the nature of the material energy, it's put us in anxiety. If we want to become God, then she makes sure that we're in anxiety all the time. So we give up that illusion and recognize ourselves and everyone else as Krishna's eternal servant. Then we can try to help end racism when people actually realize that everyone is Krishna's servant, everyone is eternally equal on the spiritual platform, simultaneously one with but different from God. Krishna, God is always God. We're always equally subordinate to him. Therefore, in that sense, we're all equal. And Krishna is always God. And from the external point of view, this is illusion. It's not that it doesn't exist, but it's not us. And whatever situation we are in, if we utilize that in Krishna's service, then we'll realize who we are. We'll realize the equality of all of the entities. And we'll actually develop love for Krishna and love for everyone else then we'll actually be free from all material conceptions and prejudice and enviousness. This material world exists on the platform of enviousness, where everyone is competing on the material concept, but when we compete on the spiritual concept, then there'll be love instead of enviousness, and then there'll actually be equality, spiritual equality. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Yes. Okay, do we have a microphone? Uh, we have these protests every Friday here at the okay. parliament, so is it a good idea like, for the voters to go there and have a Harinam or distribute books or not so? Do I think it's a good idea? Well, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Otherwise, people will think that we're part of the protest, but we're not really. Dira dira janat priyo priyakara krishna kirtana gana gana tana puro. That we can go to a protest and we distribute books, etc. But the other people will think that we'll probably identify ourselves as against them or something. We don't want to see ourselves be seen as for or against any party. We're for Krishna. Because we're for Krishna, we're for everyone. And if we're for everyone, then we can do everyone good. And if we're seen as sectarian or part of one group against another, then we may not be able to do anyone any good. It's not that we're not concerned. Krishna was concerned. He he removed Duryodhana because he, he replaced him with with Yudhisthira Maharaj, because Yudhisthira Maharaj was for Krishna. So we want someone to be for Krishna. But we're not so sure that the people who are protesting, they're all for Krishna. They're usually just for themselves. So we, we want to go out there and, you know, we want to replace modern society with the leaders, with leaders who are for Krishna. 
then there might be some benefit. Otherwise, there's not going to be any real substantial benefit. Of course, we replace them with people who are at least favorable towards Krishna. That's that's good. Can I ask another question? Yeah. Uh, you said that everybody is a racist. Yes. But if you ask uh, some person on the street, they will say, no, I'm not a racist. So yeah, they'll say so many things. <laughs> just like it says in Bengal, that it, just as a goat can eat anything, so a mad person could say anything. Because we don't go out and call people crazy or mad, because we're also crazy and mad. So we don't want to unjustly criticize others when we can also be criticized. But as long as we have this material bodily concept of life, then we're going to discriminate. Because everyone, the material body, bodily concept of life is caused by our desire to be better than others, rather than serve Krishna, rather than feel ourselves subordinate to Krishna, the whole, and subordinate service, servant to everyone. We're in the bodily concept of life because we're not accepting this completely. But of course, we're trying to, if we're devotees, we're trying to get out of our misconceptions by doing devotional service and chanting Hare Krishna. But we're also, we're not completely unaffected by it, and nor is anyone else. Therefore, they can claim they, they love their neighbor, but they kill their cow. They kill so many living entities. Where is the equality? They're also spiritual beings. They're also souls. So without the spiritual conception of life, everyone is envious and prejudiced. They can't even, you know, the cow's giving milk and they're killing the cow, their mother. So how can you not be prejudiced? Anything else? Yes. Guruji, uh, I have one question, like, uh, I'm not denying the existence of uh, Krishna, and uh, as you said, Krishna is the center of existence. So, why uh, he is a creator of the universe, uh, as we can say, why there is so much chaos in in the universe, and why there is so much instability, why uh, uh, racism is the mentality, uh, I think so. Yes. So, why people are not you know, mentally developed? Like uh, he is the creator, so why he doesn't create people like uh, uh, understanding each other and? Uh, he and does that. Uh, uh, they're all in the spiritual world, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's the normal people. Yeah. Everyone else, those who don't want to be normal, they came here. So they can imitate Krishna and fight to become Krishna with each other. Mm-hmm. So we can also, when we accept Krishna is actually God, mm-hmm. and we work to help others understand that, then we become normal again also. And at least in our lives, there won't be these conflicts. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Grandaraj, Shrimad Bhagavad Gita, Kijai, Shila Prabhupada, Kijai, Gaur Pramananda. Yeah.